Although Africans by nature are religious people, we are today experiencing a time when even among the Africans, there are people who say that there is no God. No. Uh, religion and uh, Christianity or whatever is a confusing uh, uh, thing. I think, I think even those who pretend that there is no God, they are also ashamed to say it publicly. Yeah. Mm. Because the surrounding is more, more, more Christian. It's the atmosphere. You, are, you have to look around it to say, who is, who, who am I, <laughs> who is listening to me? <laughs> We never had shrines or places of worship, no. God was uh, sporadically addressed to, for example, the time of drought or at the time of harvest, new, new fruit, or at the time of uh, sickness. Of course, which was not known is Jesus Christ. That name was completely new to them. Otherwise, the attributes of God, which they spoke about, was quite, quite similar, if not the same. So the king gave the first permission for them to, to come in. The, as such, they have to be settled near the king's place for close observation. They were people who were sort of full of the spirit of revivalism and uh, they wanted to create the church to, to establish Christianity. So they did not bother much about the correct theology. So uh, the concentration of their teaching was the salvation of the soul did not only preach in the church, but they also established hospitals, they started schools, they taught people agriculture, they taught people carpentry, and all these skills. In fact, our, the first uh, generation of pastors, maybe first, second, and third generation of pastors could, could do all this like carpentry or, or putting up uh, the, the, the roofs of the, the buildings. The people who colonized us were Christians. Where in the Bible was it given for the Germans to colonize us? Um, let, let me say that during the German colonial time, the, the racial segregation was not that, that strong. It was there, but not too strong. That's why even Rautan and, and uh, Zoglund got married to the colored ladies. And of course the Germans married to the black girls and so on. The northern kings uh, contacted each other, but they never managed to come up together to fight against the Germans and together with the Hereros. Only in Hale. Sure. If they could come here, they might also jeopardize his position. So, he was very careful. It was only then after the National Party in South Africa in 1948 took power. They introduced the racial segregation policies by law. And that of course uh, caused a very negative reaction, not only to the missionaries, but also to everybody else. Namibia is a jail. It doesn't need to, to be taken to jail to experience what a jail is. Education was planned differently so that uh, they could make good servants for themselves and people were not educated to be free. The, the evangelical Lutheran teaching was more uh, eye opens 
here I think also Anglican. And then now when the people see that uh, the government, the, the, the then government, see that these people are thinking in another different way like the Western way, who is influencing them? They say these teachers, these missionaries. political parties which were created in Namibia were mainly influenced by the church. The leaders were church-born, church-educated people. Now they also start reading the Bible just to find political sentiments to, 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 to challenge the system. That way, uh, all of them, not only pastors but also politicians, we are also referring to the Bible. What does the Bible say? They speak, the Bible speaks about the God of peace, God of love, God of justice. Now, what is justice in this particular case? Apartheid system, it's not only a political problem, but it's more a religious problem. Apartheid is being committed and done in the name of Christ. Sefania Kameta Sade att det är det politiskt medvetna församlingarnas uppgift att motsätta sig sataniska regeringar. Namibierna började agera speciellt via den politiska sydafrikanska befrielserörelsens vapo. De lutherska kyrkornas ledare Biskop Leonard Awala och moderatorn Paulus Govasheb sände ett öppet brev. I remember as I was told uh, the Prime Minister of South Africa Foster stood up and he bit on the table saying what are you telling me? That's where then as I was also told my father stood up and beat also three times on that desk. He said listen it's not me who is speaking. Is God speaking through me to let you understand that you have to free the people in Southwest Africa? Yet the free land from race discriminating. There are a lot of young people who are becoming more frustrated. Who those? They are those who fear for their lives. Those who who are being threatened. Those who haven't could get off, who doesn't see any future anymore in Namibia. Man litade på kyrkans egen tidning, Omukvetu, kompanjonen. But Omukvetu was a very, very strong instrument because the people, it was written in the Oshiwambo, people in the vernacular. People could read for themselves. They could see what happened in the other different kind of corners of the country. I Namibia utmynnade situationen i ett krig. But there was no other means to, to repel the colonial power than to take up arms. Afrikas sista koloni Namibia blev självständigt år 1990. Erityisesti Namibia Lutheranin kirkko myötä vaikutti erittäin positiivisesti hyvin vaikeissa tilanteessa siihen, että And according to me have a sustainable life someone who is born in an environment where someone can live, not die at a young age someone who can acquire the standard kind of education be able to support himself or herself be able to vote for the kind of leaders they want, be able to question the kind of leaders they have, be able to, to acquire a sustainable economy, be, have, be able to have a house which one says, yes, this is the house I want to live in. You cannot actually uh, make people understand the kingdom of God that is to come 
if you are not able to demonstrate it here, if, if you want people to believe in God, you have to provide that God right now. We don't need to choose either the gospel or development. We should keep it together. Again, the tension between the spiritual and the physical, the now and the coming. Unfortunately, the Christians are the ones to be blamed today, mainly. They're supposed to be the guardians of peace and justice in this world, but they seem to be the main art architects of violence. We see the situation of America and the Middle East, for example. A superpower, a Christian country, which happened to be a superpower, but it does not function according to the Christian principles at all. Refugees coming to Europe, you will complain and complain, but they will come and come. You will make rules and rules. They will break and break because of development imbalance. It is my world and everybody else's world. So let us make a point that wherever we happen to be, we exercise what is right to everybody.